Hey guys, my name is Pedron, and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concept, Simply Explained. Part 30, decision trees, pruning, and hyperparameters. So in this episode, we'll be going over the concepts of what do we mean by pruning a tree, and specifically, we'll talk about what is cost complexity pruning method. If you have watched part 28 and 29, you should have a good understanding of the basic definitions of a decision tree, what do we mean by decision tree criteria, and what are regression trees and classification trees. Now in this episode, let's talk about pruning a tree and how to adjust the hyperparameters. What are the hyperparameters and how to adjust them? So what is pruning a tree? So in order to understand what do we mean by pruning a tree, let's look at a classification example. Imagine we are plotting the error rate versus model complexity. In decision trees for model complexity, we can think of the nominal num number of terminal nodes, right? So the more terminal nodes, it means that the tree is bushier and it's more complex. So here we are going to have a smaller tree, small tree, and here we are going to have a very bushy tree. Okay. Now, what if we have a small tree? For a smaller tree with fewer splits may lead to a lower variance, right? So look at that, the variance is low. And a better interpretation, let's say you have a tree like this, and then maybe tree only with uh, three terminal nodes, right? This is perfectly interpretable, right? It's really easy to interpret, interpretable. Uh, but it comes at the cost of high bias, right? So if you look at that, because the model is uh, least complex, it's very simple, it's going to be biased, the model bias is going to be high, right? Smaller trees are also too short-sighted. So I'm quoting from ISLR textbook, and it says that a seemingly, a seemingly worthless split early on in the tree might be followed by a very good split down the road, a split that leads to a large reduction in RSS or impurity index later on. But if we stick to a smaller tree, that split is not going to show up, right? So that, uh, that seemingly worthless split is not going to be picked at the very, uh, let's say, top root. And for that reason, the following very good split also we're going to miss that, right? So what's the solution? It seems that maybe a better strategy is to grow a very large tree. So let's say do something like this. This may produce a good prediction on the train set. However, it is likely to overfit the data, right? And that leads to a poor test set, test set performance. So we know that if the tree is very bushy, yes, maybe the bias is small, yeah, but the, the variance is going to be large in the test set. And overall, the total error is going to be large. So, what, so for that reason, we need to do something about it. So we say that, okay, let's start with a very large tree. Let's make sure that we're going to see all these good splits down the road. We're not going to ignore any of them, but uh, we need to prune it back in order to obtain a soft tree. So we start here, we start from this bushy tree, and we're going to prune it back to get to a better uh, bias variance trade-off, right? So maybe here. All right, and for that, we're going to use a method called cost complexity pruning method. Uh, in the next slide, uh, let's talk about this method. So what is cost complexity pruning method? We also call it weakest link pruning, by the way. So this is a technique used to deal with overfitting. It reduces the size of a decision tree by removing section of the tree that are considered the weakest link, right? The, those sections provide little predictive or classification power. So in order to understand that, let's consider a sequence of trees indexed by a non-negative tuning parameter alpha. Okay, so this is our tuning parameter. Then for each value of alpha, there's going to be a corresponding subtree. So let's call it T, which is a subset of the, the, the bushiest tree, right? This is a very large tree, we call it T0. And uh, such that the following objective function is minimized. So what is the objective function? This is what we are trying to minimize in this modification. If you pay attention, the first part of the minimization is exactly what we have seen before. We are minimizing the RSS over all the regions, right? So we are minimizing the RSS in all the regions. However, we are adding a penalty term. 
This is pretty much like the regularization concepts that we have seen before, right? So we are adding a penalty term by basically saying if the tree is bushier, so this um, t is going to be larger, then we're going to add it to the cost function. And later on, so let's go ahead and penalize it by parameter alpha, right? So what does this mean? Let, let's quickly go over the parameters first. So t indicates the number of terminal nodes in the tree. Our m is the uh, region or the rectangle corresponding to mth terminal node. And y hat rm is the mean of the training observations in rm. So this is for a regression setup for classification. The idea is pretty much the same. Okay. Cost complexity means basically penalizing the complex model, penalizing the bushy tree. And we're going to do that by adding this part to the minimization um, problem. So alpha is going to control the bias variance straight up here for us and, it's de and itself is determined by cross validation. Okay, so if you remember, this was the bias versus variance chart, you know, error rate and versus comp model complexity. So bias square here, and we have overall error rate, right? Then if the tree is bushy, we know that overall error is going to be high, so we're trying to prune it back. And the idea is that add a little bit of bias in order to decrease the variance a lot, right? So that's, that's the main idea of the cost complexity pruning method. After cross-validation, when we found the alpha, we are going to go back to the data sets and find the subtree corresponding to that alpha. Because remember, each alpha has a corresponding tree. So when, you, when we find the alpha, we go back to the tree and look at that optimal tree. So let's say the optimal tree has uh, T of alpha terminal nodes. So if alpha is small, uh, we are going to get LO for bushier tree. And in, the extreme, in its extreme case, uh, if alpha is zero and we are not adding any stopping criteria, then this RSS is going to converge to zero. Okay, and we're going to get the bushiest tree. As we increase the alpha, we are penalizing the complexity of the model. So basically we are forcing the model to come up with smaller trees. Okay, and by finding the optimal value for alpha, we can get a better trade-off between the bias and variance. So this method is called cost complexity pruning method. Now let's apply this cost complexity pruning method to our baseball uh, player salary example. This is the example that we are uh, borrowing from the ISLR textbook. Okay, so imagine this is the unpruned tree that results from recursive binary splitting on the train data. So this is unpruned. However, we are going to impose some stopping criteria because if there is no stopping criteria, we know that in the train set, the tree is going to be very bushy and it's going to overfit. So in this example, the stopping criteria is that we should have, uh, well, each terminal load sh should uh, not contain less than 10 observations. So we need to make sure that at each terminal load, there is no less than 10 observations. So we know that uh, there is no less than 10 observation here, 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 and etc. right? So how many terminal loads do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So the number of terminal nodes for an unpruned tree is equal to 12. How many levels do we have? So if I want to look at the levels, so the depth of the tree, uh, let's look at the longest path. So here on the right hand side, one, two, three, and four, right? So the depth of the tree is four. This means that we can have potentially two to the power of four or 16 terminal nodes. But we end up with 12 terminal node, it means that there's a stopping criteria going on. And we talked about that stopping criteria. Now let's impose the cost complexity pruning method and look at the results. So in order to find the optimal alpha out of cost complexity method, we can plot uh, in this example, because it's regression, we're gonna look at mean squared error versus uh, tree size. Basically, we can plot it against alpha, because, but we know that there is a corresponding tree to each alpha. So in the ISLR textbook, the authors prefer to plot it against tree size, but usually we can uh, plot, plot the mean squared error or the error rates versus alpha, right? 
And here we're going to look at uh, three curves, basically the, the training, the cross validation and test set. So we're going to plot the mean and squared error in the train set, cross validated version of the mean and squared error and the test set. And we know that if you have watched my previous videos, you know that uh, for tuning the hyperparameters, it is best to work with the cross validation version, right? So the graph that we need to look into to figure out what is the best uh, optimal value for alpha is going to be this green one, the cross validated version of the MSE. If you pay attention to this one, so where is this uh, curve minimized? Oh, right here, right? And at this point, the tree size is equal to three, right? And now let's visualize this tree in the next slide. Okay, so this is the tree that we started the, uh, this lecture with, right? So we said that in the visually, if you remember the color coded uh, circles here, visually we were satisfied with all the observations here and on the right hand side, we decided to make another split, right? And now using the cost complexity pruning method, we came up with the same answer, right? So that's how effectively this uh, cost complexity pruning technique is going to help us to come up with the optimal alpha, uh, optimal alpha and the correspond correspondingly to the optimal decision tree. So this is going to be the result, the final uh, optimal tree for this uh, regression problem, a tree with three terminal nodes and two levels. So as you can see, this cost complexity pruning method is a very effective way to make sure that uh, we avoid overfitting, right? So what are the other hyperparameters to, uh, that help us to avoid overfitting? So other hyperparameters that we can also call them regularization parameters that helps us avoid overfitting are the following ones. The first one is the maximum depth of the tree. So if we basically the, tell the algorithm that you cannot have a tree with more than depth of three or four, you're basically skipping that tree the, the relatively simple or small. And you know that a smaller tree or relatively small tree will not overfit the data, right? Another hyperparameter is minimum population at a node, right? So for example, you want to say that at each term, at each node, uh, internal node or terminal node, we, know, we want to have at least this amount of minimum uh, population or minimum train size. We can also look at maximum number of decision nodes. So let's say we're going to impose this restriction that your tree is going to have at most 10 decision nodes, right? So any of these uh, hyperparameters, as you can uh, see, is going to regularize uh, the model. Basically by regularization means that it doesn't let it to be unnecessarily complex, okay? Another one is minimum impurity decrease, right? Or the minimum information gain we need to have, right? So this basically means that if uh, the split that you're thinking about uh, is not adding enough or large enough impurity uh, decrease to the uh, to the model, then you have to basically stop there, right? So we need to make sure that at each split that you're considering, uh, that split is going to bring enough, large enough impurity decrease or purity increase, right? So this is another one. And all, uh, finally, the one that we already talked about is our alpha. Alpha coming from the weakest link pruning or cost complexity pruning method. Okay, so what are other hyperparameters? Uh, the other ones are basically we have already talked about them. So we can think of criterion, so Gini or entropy. For regression, we usually use RSS and basically RSS is pretty much, the, the effect is pretty much the same as MSC. It really doesn't matter which one to work, to work with. And uh, so basically whenever we have, we are going to have a uh, choice when it comes to a classification tree, right? Then uh, what is the splitter? So the splitter is also a hyperparameter that basically define if you want to put that uh, cutoff, you want to select it randomly or it, it wants to come out of the optimization problem, right? And then finally, we can for classification, we can think of class weight and the class weight can be either balanced or we cannot assign any kind of class weight, right? This class weight is going to basically use the value of your target variable variables to be automatically adjusted weights inversely proportional to the class frequency, right? So for example, you have, uh, I don't know, the data set is very imbalanced. 
and that's that's usually the case in finance examples right so imagine you're looking at uh, defaults versus no defaults of a loan application right or a credit card so we know that these data sets are usually for example 97 percent 98 percent no defaults and uh, let's say one to two percent or two to three percent default right so these are highly 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 imbalanced and for imbalanced data we know that we have to do something about it right because we cannot trust uh, the performance metrics like you know AUC or, or ROC right and for that we can change the class weight of the model uh, from non to balanced basically we are going to give these observations a weight uh, inversely related to their frequency let's say if it is 90, 98 versus 2 so we are going to give 1 over 98 weight to these observation and we're we are going to give 1 over 2 weight to these observations right so this is one technique to deal with imbalanced data set the, the, the literature is um, is huge there are uh, lots of other techniques that's beyond the scope of this class okay so that's it uh, in the next video we are going to wrap up the, the journey in decision trees by going over its advantages and disadvantages and what are the applications in finance until the next one take care